promises. Okay, but I'll tell you what, so we're actually going to cut now. I'm going to bring in my, my mate, Daryl Hoffland. I just want to uh, ask you some questions. And uh, and then after that, we'll chase that with all things bright and beautiful, and then Al Shaddai. Okay. Super. We'll see you just now, Drew. Daryl. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so so good to, to have you with us, Daryl. Oh, thank you. I'm super honored. This is this when you asked me, I was like, oh, yes, this is so cool. Thank you. Oh, this brilliant. whole yeah, I, session I, I, thing is amazing. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, we're um, we're you know it's, it's it's a bit of a a bit of a mess, but we, we we enjoy doing it every week. Just to let people watching know, Daryl and I we go way back because you were a pastor in a church that I ministered in. Yeah, back in two thousand twelve, I think. Yeah, two thousand twelve, and then um, uh, and then I moved actually over to Ireland, and, and you moved to the UK about uh, about the same time, or or, or uh, I think you. Uh, I got you in two, 2018. When did you get? Okay, you? It, was, it was about the same time. And, yeah. and now you're 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 ministering the church, a, a church of England parish. Yeah, in Milton Keynes. Okay, and, and how's it working out for you, Dara? Yeah, pretty cool. Um, you know, you know, from, when from work when I worked with you, I love being creative. So um, we we did some creative things together. Yeah. Still get to do creative stuff from like doing stuff with the youth or even services or whatever stuff like. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just and there's such creative people in my church, which yeah. is so amazing. Um, very, very cool. And I think yeah. that's actually the the reason why when I was thinking about Sacred Ordinary, uh, I went to you because I know you've written a book, Daryl. I'm going to ask you a question about it in, in a short while, but but my sense is even in that book, um, I've all, one of the things I've always appreciated you is about you is in your theological understanding of God. There's always a sense of God's immediacy and God's presence. And you've always lived your life with a sense of wonder about like the the God that you kind of see just kind of really filling your your universe and your space. Is that would that be correct? Yeah, that 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 is spot on. Like I um he has a copy of the book, by the way. Yeah, what's it called? Collection of Goods. Yeah. It's actually Collection of Goods is inspired by a Collective Soul song. They had a song called Collect Collection of Goods. Okay. But basically it's a it's a it's a book bunch of short stories and then a bunch of observations that like kind of life observations almost like a journal entry okay. and i guess the essence of my book is to just notice god in the ordinary things and my friend nick masters he's actually quite an avid reader and he did such a cool review for me on goodreads and on amazon i actually saw that yeah he got the essence of the book right that's exactly what i wanted like to to live like be full, fully present in moments to notice things um, and that's kind of my short stories this, this desire for connection this desire to be present in the world around us i guess um yeah brilliant brilliant and now, now, now daryl obviously like um anybody's theological world is is shaped by current events COVID being quite a big thing how's that impacted your own faith and your own journey um i i think it's been quite a good year 2020 i mean obviously being stuck indoors has been difficult but we haven't been entirely stuck in doors completely i mean uh i've been running a lot i've been riding a lot i've i've done the most distance ever in one year on my bicycle and on my feet um so it's been good i've never uh run a marathon before and then i set 2020 as a goal to run a marathon i ended up running two marathons so physically it's been really cool i've just kept going and then um this back this book has been on the back burner, back burner for about 10 years. I'm like, oh, I must do it, I must do it. And then I had a New Year's resolution in January before I even knew COVID was we all and any of us knew COVID was a thing. I was like, this year is gonna be a year I'm gonna finish this book. Yeah. And then lockdown happened and it was a kind of a blessing in some ways that I could actually sit down and rework some of the stuff, um, re-edit some stuff and just get stuff out there. Um so it's been it's been good ministry wise it's been challenging because obviously everything is online now so like you, by august i think i was to in that first lockdown i was totally zoomed out i was like so frustrated like, <laughs> it's screen fatigue i think that's what it's called it's just hosting yeah. Yeah. yeah and and you've obviously managed to push through that heading towards the end of the year daryl what are your hopes and dreams for like the advent season and into 2021 uh, sure. I thought thought of that. That question is quite a difficult question. Um, I don't know. Just um, I guess every I actually think approaching Christmas every time I, I 
I guess every year I want someone to get it. You know, I want someone to just get what Christmas is about on the Christmas side of things. Um, we have to be quite different in how we're doing Christmas going forward. And I, I, yeah, pray for sort of creativity that God could use creative ideas to reach people. Um, I know at our church, we're quite excited. We're <laughs> mounting this massive star. Like it's like two meters by two meters. That's going to go on top of our Church of England building. Um, so we're quite excited. It's going to be quite bright and hopefully everyone over Bletchley. I mean, when you're approaching the church, you could see, see yeah. the bigger than the original. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just hope it's brighter. I don't think it's brighter than the original, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, the question you originally asked me a question, it's like how, like what, what are your hopes and dreams for the next in your faith life? And I kind of thought, well, faith life for me, I wouldn't want to uh, dif- yeah, differentiate it, yeah, and say like actually all of life is um, just it's all faithful. It's all of it's in faith and spirit- spiritual. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just excited. I don't know what 2021 holds yet. I haven't got there yet, so I'm still <laughs> going through 2020. So. Well, Daryl, listen, it's always a delight talking to you. Uh, your your humor, your 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 joie de vivre is fantastic, and um and I did go. I will be ordering my copy of a collection of goods. And you've got some really good reviews on there as well. So congratulations, my friend, on writing your first book. And I wish you every blessing in your ministry. And uh, and we'll we'll chat off screen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Daryl. And uh, and we'll we'll chat soon. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Ciao, ciao, Daryl. In fact, if you stay in the studio, I might bring you in uh, for for a little bit of a collective uh, a dialogue later on, if that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mary and Griff. Um, I just want to say I'm having a bit of pause with my, my internet, so I'm trying to comment on people's comments that are flying in. And um, and I can't. It's just it's just blocking me. So basically, thank you for the comments. Keep them coming in. Um, we know that in fact we have a dual uh, purpose for um, for well a, a dual theme because today is also Remembrance Day, and uh, and that's the day that marks the end of World War One, and of course is a day in which we commemorate all those who have lost their lives uh, and and sacrificed uh, in war, um, and. Um, you know, it's always a pregnant time of year, and I thought maybe to ask all of you peeps, what what does this mean for you? What does Remembrance Day mean for you? What thoughts and feelings does it evoke? I think Drew should go first. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know, it's a it's a it's a funny one. My my granddad came over to Cork back in like 1932. Um, from the UK and he always wore his his poppy and there were times there were times during that time where it wasn't you know considered you know it wasn't considered is, is that acceptable necessarily by certain people to wear the poppy mm. you, you know with Irish history um, but for me I, I it's an unusual one I suppose I consider myself a pacifist mm. and again you know obviously acknowledging and respecting those people who gave the ultimate sacrifice for 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 what they believe to be the truth and what they believe to to be right um the concept of war and uh, that's why i'm always very careful when i was thinking about even thinking about music for this about you know acknowledging that with, yeah. with, without sort of celebrating the triumphalism of of mm-hmm. war and even when you see the images and you you all but there's all there's there's sometimes seems to be this kind of element of power attached to it mm-hmm. so re, like remembrance in the month of november and everything like that and and the 11th the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month is it's very important and very significant for a lot of for a lot of people and it does need to be respected but just you know for someone for someone like me and i know down through the centuries christians have struggled with 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 this since the beginning of of the faith really with struggling with this idea um the the balance sort of between fighting for what is right and and also you know wanting to morally and ethically you know live in a sort of with a pacifist ideals you know yeah i think that uh, beautifully voices my my own my own position as well uh, maybe griff you guys add anything to that 
just the yeah i'm i'm sort of like drew it's it's a tough um it's a tough thing to remember and i suppose i'm just always mindful it's the exact same thing there can't be any pride in in wearing um in wearing the poppy the poppy represents the the death the vast hundreds of thousands of deaths the the flowers feeding off of the war dead in those in those flanders fields mm. so um i'm always conflicted with the when i when i sort of catch a, a whiff of uh, pride about the mm. about remembrance day and um mm. and uh, the great war or or thinking about the war dead and that that it's a it's a humbling the poppy is a symbol of uh of uh the humbling reality of war and the the toll it takes so in in terms of remembrance i love i love the idea um yeah. and that's what the poppy means to me mm -hmm. great thank you very much daryl would you add anything to that yeah i'd say i suppose growing up in south africa you we felt a little bit removed from it because it, um yeah south africa being so far away but um like I kind of think of this whole tradition of, of of remembering every year, and sometimes I just my I always wonder. I just hope that people don't get caught in the rituals of it and actually forget what we're remembering and what it's about. Um, and I kind of just thought this this year uh, on the fifth of November, uh, fire, fireworks nights when um, like fireworks are going off, and I, I, for me it makes me think that some people hearing that sound brings them to World War. You know, hearing like. Um, there's still people alive who have that in their memory. They can have their team friends blown up in front of them, killed in front of them. They've heard bomb like bombs exploding. So I can't even fathom that. Like there's there's really like obviously older okay. people who have this um, memory. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> like Andrew froze something. It, it, that's that's just what he does sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> he's, he's he's changed a lot. He usually wears a hat because he's trying to be kind of young and cool and approachable. But uh, it's good to have a, a proper young, cool person in the uh, office today. Anyway, we're, we're wearing a hat. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> I'm just wearing a hat because like my receding hairline's terrible. So I just thought. I know. It's, it's all ahead of us. <laughs> well, something is happening.